Hello my loves, thank you so much for joining me. It's Kirsten, we're at the start of another weekly vlog because my weeks start on a Tuesday apparently, but I genuinely do think that nobody really likes Mondays, they're just like a nonsense day. So I feel like starting on a Tuesday just gives better positive vibes, or at least that's what I'm going with. So anyway, I hope you are doing all well. This week is going to be a good week. I have four days off work and I plan on just getting quite a few bits done actually. It's gonna be a good time. Today we need to finish painting a bookshelf. So if you watched last week's video, you would know that I painted all of these shelves from white to green and I absolutely loved it, but I still have one bookshelf left to do and that's what we're going to tackle today. So I want to get that finished and also edit a couple of videos. It's going to be a busy one but once that last bookshelf is done it's going to be great. So I'm super excited. I would also like to finish reading Ninth House by Leah Bardugo. So I started this last week and I had my reservations going into it. Leah Bardugo is a really celebrated YA author here on YouTube and also Bookstagram and just in general really. However when I tried reading the Grishaverse trilogy last year I just could not get into it. I really didn't enjoy it. The first book was good and promising, but the second and third book just really fell flat for me. I didn't enjoy them at all. And I was very hesitant to then go into her first adult book, mainly because I wasn't sure if it was her writing style I didn't get on with. It turns out that those worries were unfounded. I am really, really enjoying this. I have... 150 pages left to go, so I plan on getting this finished today as well. This is a perfect book for autumn, especially Halloween. It's all about ghosts and I think it's so, so good. We're following Alex and she has been accepted into Yale University, except she never even applied. They have taken her for this particular society that is able to see ghosts and oversee the other societies within Yale University that dabble in the arcane. Do various things, you have some that are able to do glamours of people, you have some that are able to turn into different animals or so, so many other ones. It's actually really really interesting, I really like the magic system in this and it's all based through the occult which I just think works so well for this time of year. So Alex is brought on board to be one of the people that supervise what's going on to make sure that they don't harm anybody that they're not meant to. Alex is one of the very, very few people that can actually see ghosts without any drug enhancement. As a result, she is seen as this great commodity, but she's also very frustrated because she's seen ghosts for as long as she can remember and not once did they actually approach her and tell her how to deal with these ghosts and she's been assaulted several times with them. It's something that, you know, she found out they've been keeping an eye on her her whole life but nobody ever actually stepped in to help her until she became useful to them. We also follow two timelines. So we have the timeline now which is following Alex as she's trying to deal with Yale University and her role and there's also been a murder that's happened as well as her mentor has disappeared. And then the second timeline is with her mentor and when she first arrives to Yale University and you see kind of his thoughts about her as well and his past. It's really good, I'm actually really enjoying it. It is very info dumpy at the start. You do get a lot of, I would say some of it a bit unnecessary information, but it's all about Yale University, the different societies, how they were founded, even some of the architectural stuff. It's interesting but I do think it is a bit heavy handed. I personally didn't mind it, I thought Leo Bardugo did it pretty well considering that it's done in a way that Alex gets to Yale University, Darlington is mentoring her and telling her all this information so she's learning it and she's being thrown in the deep end so she's just getting loads and loads of information. So it feels very info dumpy but at the same time if you put yourself in Alex's shoes it is exactly how it would have been for her. So yeah, this is actually really good. I'm thinking it's definitely gonna be at least four stars. Really enjoying this, really like the atmosphere, the mystery elements to this, and I just, yeah, there's so many things going on. I think it's really good. I put this book off for like a year before actually picking it up. That was foolish, but like I said, I did have reservations in general because I didn't like her other books, so this was definitely worth it though and the black sprayed edge version is beautiful. 
Okay, well that's what I'm reading at the moment. I did start Kingdom of the Cursed last week, but this is on the back burner for now because I've hit a kind of slump with it. The first bit of the book I really enjoyed, second part not so much. When I actually get back to reading this I'll do a proper summary of what's going on but right now I'm not feeling it so we're just gonna leave that one to one side. But as I said we do have a busy week so today as I said we're gonna be redecorating and got some editing to do. Tomorrow I'm looking after my nephew so I'm babysitting him for the day and then Thursday Friday we also have lots of plans and stuff but you're gonna come along with me and see what we get up to anyway. Like I said I hope your week is going well and Right, let's get painting. little while since I've updated it's been so so busy but I've absolutely loved it so Tuesday we did finish painting the last bookcase which I'm very happy with and now everything is just exactly how I want it in here it's just so much better um and then Wednesday as I said I was looking after my nephew we did lots of painting made a complete mess of everything but it was quite nice like he was really easy to look after nothing major at all and then yesterday I spent the day with my partner and we went up central London as per usual but it was a really good time and we had really good food it's just honestly the past three days have passed so so quickly and knowing that this is my last day off for the holiday of this week like it's been a good time though I've really really enjoyed it today I'm planning to film three videos get them done get hopefully one of them edited and start editing this vlog and then back to work tomorrow but as I said I really really enjoyed my time off it's been so good so needed and yeah it's just been a good time so reading wise, I've actually made quite a bit of progress. I finished Ninth House. This came out as four stars. I really enjoyed it. The way it's ended means that I am really excited for that second book. It's going to be a really interesting look at hell and demons uh, not just focusing on the ghosts that we have had in this book. Also the twists and turns that this book took were just perfect. I absolutely loved them. I thought it was really gripping, really enjoyed it. I know some people have struggled with this book and I think because as I've said throughout this vlog it is a bit info dumpy but for me personally I really liked it. I liked all the references to other books and it's just this really worked for me. I really, really liked it. There is a lot of trigger warnings and stuff, so do be careful and look those up before you go into it. But overall, I thought this was really good and definitely my favourite book by Leo Bardugo. So yeah, this was a complete hit. Four stars, really enjoyed it. I'm happy. It was a good time. And then because I finished that, I decided to start Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which... Ah, oh, this book is so good. One is a classic, so I've been loving the writing. I have to admit, the first two chapters were just beautiful. It was so well written, and it was literally just describing a gravel path up to Manderley House. It was just beautiful and lovely. The writing is stunning, and it sets such a good atmosphere for this book. And what I found so intriguing is I have almost finished this book, and I still don't know the name of our main character. Like, it hasn't been referred to at all. Everything in this book is from her perspective, so obviously she doesn't refer to herself with her own name. But the other characters never say it either. And it's very weird because she's just like this ghost of a person and she feels like she's constantly being compared to her husband's late wife and she just feels so... Like, she can't match up to the expectation. It's really interesting to see her go through this place. So originally she meets her husband in Monte Carlo, the south of France, and she is a companion to this rather annoying woman, um, but she falls in love with this man and he says, yep, yeah, come with me, don't go to New York with her, come back to Manderley and England with me. And so she does. Now I don't particularly like this relationship. I think it's very toxic. He is 
double her age which obviously at the time it's one of those things like it did happen and that's not the bit that bothers me so much it's the part like things that he will say to her like oh you little fool or you're an idiot or like he's genuinely quite like that with her he's never really said I love you or anything like that and so it's very much like she's just being used as a companion rather than actually someone that he loves whereas she believes herself in love with him but when she arrives at Mandalay she feels like all anybody does is compare her to Rebecca. Rebecca was beautiful, Rebecca was so good with society and you know she was just this amazing figure and she can never amount to anything close to it. It's really really interesting to see that struggle and to feel like she is living in the ghost of the previous wife, like she uses her stuff, everything is how Rebecca used to have it and I think it's added to because we don't know this girl's name like she's never referred to, it's either Mrs De Winter or that's it, like you don't get her first name at all and I think that just really really adds to that feeling of feeling like you're becoming the ghost and the ghost is taking over you, which is so good, I'm really really enjoying it, loving the writing, I think it's a really intriguing premise and I can definitely see why it has inspired so many things because you do have that kind of ghostly person constantly hovering over you, in a way making her do really unusual things and just turning her into someone that she isn't and it's almost like she's got such a vivid imagination that it's like she's inventing things for herself she invents these whole scenarios and plays them out and so a lot of the time you're not sure what's actually happening and what's actually just made up in her head so it's a very unreliable narrator as well so it's just really intriguing i'm really really enjoying this i have about 150 pages left to go so i'm planning to finish this today as well and then i've got no idea what i'm gonna read i don't think i'm finishing my tbr this month at all because i've still got four books to read plus i am still in the middle of kingdom of the curse which is what i might pick up over the weekend after i finish rebecca just so that it's finished and out of the way i haven't felt like picking it up but you never know the ending might surprise me um but that's it really so i'm thinking i will definitely get another two books finished off my tbr but i don't think it's going to be all four so november will be taking a punishment pick as per usual, um, I just feel like that's just the way it's gone and I think a lot of that is because I've relaxed a bit more so if I felt like picking up a book I've picked it up and just gone well who cares about the TBR thing. Like I do love it because it helps keep me structured and it means I read more because if I didn't have a TBR at all I would be very much like indecided, don't know what to read next, as a result don't pick anything up. So it does definitely help but also being a bit more relaxed with it and feeling like you know what I really fancy reading this book and being able to pick it up and just be okay with that. So it's, honestly, who knows, I'm in Bramble territory at this point. But yeah, I've got three videos to film, so I'm definitely going to be going to do that, and we'll see what the rest of the day brings. I don't plan on going out anywhere or anything, really. I literally just plan on relaxing, filming, editing, just getting ready so I have a nice relaxing day before work tomorrow. So, yeah. Wow, now that I've actually updated this vlog for the first time in a few days, I'm gonna go, get on with my day, and um, we'll probably catch up on the weekend. So, see you then. Good morning! I don't normally do an update straight away but yesterday I finished Rebecca by Daphne de Moria and I loved it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Five stars. I just really wanted to talk about it straight away. This is me doing that. I think this book was so so good. So obviously I already spoke about the fact that this woman, because we don't know her name, she feels like this ghost of a person that can't compete with a actual ghost. And I think by the time I finished this book it was just so so well done and I definitely believe that this is going to be a book that the more I reread it the more I'm actually going to be able to pull apart from this book. It was really really cleverly done. You have a lot of references to 
so many other books in this as well so there are clear connections and parallels between this and Jane Eyre which is probably part of the reason why I enjoyed it so much. So we have the young girl that is being a paid companion to this particular woman who she doesn't like. She falls in love with an older man and then goes down to this beautiful big English mansion house. She feels very shy and like she can't you know communicate with everyone that she's beneath notice that everybody is just laughing at her and then things go wrong because we're overshadowed by a previous wife which is very similar to Jane Eyre and even something that happens at the end of this book is very reminiscent of something that happens in Jane Eyre. I don't want to give things away. Definitely those clear-cut parallels between those two books which definitely enhanced my enjoyment of it. Also you also have references to Othello which is a Shakespeare play that I really want to read but all about a person that believes his wife is cheating on him. It turns out she isn't and it's a very dramatic and sad play to be fair with everything that happens. I like those references to this. It is very very good. I really enjoyed this book. I liked the twists and turns that it takes, the fact that everything is so imaginative in our main character's mind and then the twist that happens, that realisation that she has and then the continual twists that happen towards the end of the book and it just works so well. It's also a really good contrast between these two women because you have one who is very shy, very unobtrusive and ends up in this loveless marriage because their marriage is not one of physical contact, it is one of companionship and our main character frequently refers to her husband as being her father and brother and son and it's a very familial bond rather than a bond of actual love and passion. They have that contrasted with Rebecca who is a very promiscuous person who is very much referenced as a bisexual in here although not explicitly said but definitely from what is going on and the relationship she has with some people you can see that bisexuality coming through. There is also I believe a very strong argument to be made for one of our characters in here being gay and very much in love with Maxim de Winter and Maxim kind of using that and manipulating that in a way. It's it's very, so interesting. Everything about this book is just contradictions to itself. You don't know what part of this is real, what part of it is made up. You get the sense that our main character is being used so, mal not maliciously, but is being used by her husband to fulfill this role of companion because he can't bear to be on his own with everything that's happened in the past. And then you have the juxtaposition of everything being very sexual in this book apart from her, apart from our main character and the, the fact that, you know, she talks about childbirth and wanting to bring up children but the reality is she's never going to have that in her life because that is not what her marriage is. So there's just so many discussions that you can pull out of this book and that's what I like about classics so much is that they really make me think, they really make me pull the story apart and I love making different connections between different books. It's while I'll also always read the afterword or the introduction to the classic books because generally you always get those apart from in the English library editions and I just it's just really good. I think all the afterwords and things like that, they really kind of call you to attention to certain things that maybe you wouldn't have thought about or you have, but it now explores it a little bit further than what you would initially thought. And it's just so, so good. And you know that when you reread this, you're going to reread it and maybe you'll focus on something else. And so you'll reread it in a different way. So the first time I read a classic, I go into it really open minded with not knowing what I'm actually going to get from it. And I try not to delve too deep into different things. Then afterwards, I will spend a bit of time thinking it all through and seeing what connections and stuff I made. And then I keep that in mind for the next time I read it so then I can kind of focus in and see if there's anything I've missed because nine times out of ten there probably is and it just works so so well. So yeah this is why I like classics so much. Literally an enjoyment of being able to pull it apart and see what is being done in this book, what connections are being made and can I support my own argument as to what I believe is happening. I mean yes I'm not actually writing an essay on it but I do just kind of it's what I enjoy. 
it is what I enjoy. So yeah, this was very good. I would highly recommend if you do like Jane Eyre or if you like Rebecca, give Jane Eyre a try because they are very similar in that respect. This one I would say is a little bit quicker to the point. Jane Eyre is a little bit wandering in places, but overall, really, really good. Really enjoyed this. Now I do have work this morning, so we need to get going. Tomorrow is going to be a fun day because me and my partner are going to Comic-Con for the first time ever. So that's going to be really fun. So I'm going to bring you guys along with that. And then yeah, that will be the week over. Now that I've gushed about that book, I should really go get to work. I don't know what I'm reading next. I should read Kingdom of the Cursed, but we'll see. Yesterday was so awesome. I absolutely loved it and I was going to actually vlog at the end of that day so you could see how I did my hair and I was all dressed up and everything but honestly way too tired. But Comic-Con was so so good so I did dress up in a very kind of like casual Sailor Moon outfit so I had the space buns on top of my head and I had Sailor Moon earrings and the outfit but more of her like schoolgirl version. It was really good. I really enjoyed dressing up and my partner didn't dress up but he has agreed to dress up next year which is gonna be so exciting. I didn't really know what to expect because I've never been to a Comic-Con before but it was really nice seeing everyone like dressed up or at least the vast majority of people dressed up and some of the cosplays were so so good. You also had just rows and rows of stalls selling different merchandise and then of course you had the artist alley and it was just really good it was really nice it was just so much fun we got there because we got the priority pass so we got there at 10 a.m thankfully we did because it meant that we could just kind of skip the majority of the queue because honestly by 12 1 o'clock it was heaving it was so so busy but we were both exhausted because the transport was just a nightmare like there were no trains going from my closest station so that made it a lot of effort and then i was going to get the dlr which takes you to the actual XL centre and um, yeah that was all delayed and cancelled so it was just a nightmare trying to get there but it was really enjoyable I really really enjoyed it so yeah we will be going next year definitely something that we enjoyed and it was just ah, so much fun we picked up a few things so my partner got me this really cute Mew cuddly toy it was absolutely adorable and at first I was going to wait to get it but then my partner was like no no no, let me just get it for you now and I'm glad that he did because honestly about an hour later they were all sold out and I would have been so upset this is just so cute i love it he also got me a clip for my hair which i then wore throughout the day which i loved it was just worked really well and i also picked myself up a mug which says authentic witches brew because i've been after a new cup anyway so when i saw this i was just like oh, that's perfect and yeah we've got a few other little random bits but it was just a fun time it was a nice day out something a bit different something we haven't done before i absolutely loved it now over the weekend i was meant to read kingdom of the curse but i haven't picked that up still instead i read the manga classic of dracula by bram stoker and this was so good i ended up giving it five stars i really enjoyed it I thought that would happen anyway because I love Dracula as a classic anyway. I think it's really good. It's got brilliant gothic elements and there's also that kind of like feeling that by the end of the book you kind of feel bad for Dracula in a way because he's being hounded around everywhere and he just it feels kind of bad but at the same time obviously he is the villain um but I really enjoyed this I thought it was really well done the artwork in here is really good and it just brings the story to life and as everybody knows I'm a massive fan of anything that makes it easier to get into classics and the benefit of having it in a manga format is that you don't have to deal with all the descriptions of how people look, of the places, of anything like that because it's obviously all drawn out instead so you get just the snapshots of what they're thinking and the interactions with one another which I just I think it's really good it's a really easy way to get into it to see if it's something that would intrigue you and obviously if it does you can then tackle the actual classic itself but the artwork in here was just so so good and yeah 
really really good i really enjoyed these so that was five stars and yeah was reading that over the weekend instead and then because we had such a faff with travel and everything i did start reading sailor moon volume three because how could i not read this when i was dressed up as sailor moon so i've just started that i haven't got too far into it this just just nostalgia for me like that's the reason why i'm getting these in manga format and it's literally just because of the pure nostalgia of growing up with sailor moon and everything and it's just it's really good I really like it this bookmark is also what I picked up while I was at comic-con because I love picking up bookmarks from different places it's just I mean it's great so yeah that's what I've been reading again jumping off the TBR with this one but it's fine it's good and that's it that is what we did yesterday we had so much fun it was really really worth it and um yeah can't wait for the next one the next one is in may so we'll be going to that and yeah it's gonna be a great time we've already planned our outfits for next year and stuff but i'm not going to talk about that now because obviously we've got ages but yeah well that brings us to the end of this vlog so if you have enjoyed this video don't forget to give it that thumbs up subscribe comment to let me know that you're here if you're not sure what to comment then let me know if you've ever been to a comic-con if you have did you dress up or if you haven't would you dress up and what would you go as but social media links will be linked below and i will of course catch you in the next video mm -hmm.